How are you guys doing today? Welcome back. Today is lesson three, building a structure. No, we're not lumberjacks. We're actually wearing a nice tropical shirt today. We're actually going to be talking about building a structure for trading, why it's so imperative and why this class is based off this concept that no one else talks about and how rules actually matter. Today we're going to discuss, as my cat wants to make sure he knows he's here, Today we're going to discuss what's a trading structure compared to a trading system. We're also going to discuss the brief elements of it, which are risk management, the three types of analysis, mental, technical, and fundamental. We're also going to discuss goal setting, writing an actual trading plan, what are the macro markets, and of course, consistency. Those eight things are so important that no one else talks about. Yes, they may talk about it in a video where they're like, risk is what you want to risk to make a trade. Thanks, Einstein. Appreciate it. We're going to talk about these things way more in depth in this class. So I actually want to go through it with you, creating the structure as a summary where this class is going to be headed. As this class goes on, we're actually going to build it together unit by unit. Today, we're going to build it quickly to show you what we're talking about and why a trading structure with a proper trading plan is so much more useful than just having a trading plan. With that being said, lesson three, how to build a trading structure right now. Let's get into it. So there's a massive difference between a trading structure and a trading system. I think most folks in the FinTwit space, most folks who talk about trading, only focus on the trading system. It's totally fine. For this class, we're gonna use a wheel to represent the trading system. Now, these can change, right? Any these little pieces of Legos that I've used can change. And that's the main difference between a structure and a system. A system can change. This structure that we're building cannot the system they're using has way different elements to it right if you want to trade on the five day five minute time frame with part of your system that's great as time goes on as markets change as conditions change as the pd2 rule does not or does apply the wash rule applies whatever rules they change whatever happens in the market bullish to bearish macro to micro a trading system can change. You can go from the five day, five minute to the 30 day, 20 minute. It doesn't matter to the one year. It can all change. The trading system that you're using now is probably not the same as what you used six months ago or a year ago. And if you're brand new, it's certainly going to change through this course. That's the main difference of why this class is so imperative. Everyone's going to teach you this. They're going to go, here's a great trading system. I like to go out and I'm like, hey, I like to use the option calls. And I'm obviously really talented because option calls is what I teach beginners in the first place, idiots. And then we're gonna talk about how to make a bunch of money with the system, not here. We're gonna talk about building a structure. This system, one more time, can change. This, these golden bricks that we're building do not change. Again, the main purpose and the main goal, rigid in our rules, flexible in our expectations. Again, how many times have there been snow outside, rain outside? You read the news of New Orleans getting hit with a hurricane or New Jersey getting hit with a hurricane or the earthquake or tsunami, and you, you just wish they had structure and safety all the time. That's the same with the stock market. I'm not saying it's definitely life or death because it's not. I don't want to compare the two things. But it's so imperative to me that you understand that you are legally allowed to ruin your financial life in the stock market. You can. There's no one stopping you. If you want to buy the worst call options, the worst put options, or buy the dumbest stock, you can still buy the folks who own the debt of Blockbuster if you wanted to. You can. There's no structure. That's the difference. What this course and what this lesson is going to really highlight for you as you go through this course is that there's no structure in any of this. You know what you have to do as an adult? build your own. That's what's so important is that there's no rules that you have to follow. There's no like, hey, you have to make sure that you do this and that. Oh, position size doesn't matter. Ha ha ha. No, it all does matter. So just to make sure it's crystal clear through this course, you're going to build a structure along with some great tidbits to make a system with. You can legally destroy your own financial future. The walls, the foundation and the ceiling keep you safe. Yeah, sure. There's some great Beautiful summer days and nights you wish you could just sleep outside and you could really enjoy the fresh air the Oh, the fireflies are out blah blah blah. There's definitely going to be some days where you're like I don't need a, I don't need a house. I don't need structure. This is great out here camping with nothing else, right? And then here comes the snow. Here comes the rain. Here comes a bear. All the terrible things come and you're like dang I wish I had a structure. Well, let's talk about that today and how we can build our own structure to keep ourselves safe, right? 
The most important block is this. It has no color coordination because again, if you didn't know, Legos are expensive, so I got as many as I needed, so they're not color coded, sorry. But this is our foundation. Oh my goodness. If you could guess what this is, you're a genius. This is in fact risk management. Through this course, we only have one lesson dedicated strictly to risk management because I harp on it literally every single lesson. I may not talk about it directly, but I talk about risk management and risk assessment every single lesson, basically. Why is it so important? It starts with having predefined risk and predefined reward. If you have predefined risk, if you have predefined reward, you can properly accept the trade because when there's predefined risk and predefined reward, there's absolutely no expectations you cannot think of. Because in essence, you're saying, I'm gonna get to A or I'm gonna get to B. It's gonna go up or it's gonna go down. If it goes down, stop loss out. Price target, money out. There's no predefined risk you're never gonna be taking on. It all starts with this. All risk starts here, all safety starts here, all safety nets start right here. Secondly, when it comes to risk management, we're gonna talk about are there variables you like to talk about and don't like to talk about? This is so important with this one piece in particular. There's always gonna be one more variable to think about. Oh man, I wish I would have thought about lumber prices. Oh, I wish I knew that Elon said this. Oh, uh, there's only so much you can do. The second you throw more variables at this, the second you start saying, hey, I'm gonna change my strategy and my structure so I can add another variable, you're done. Don't do it. Focus on the variables that you like to manage the risk that you like. There's no reason throwing more variables. Again, the more you know does not correlate to winning more trades. One more time. The more that you know does not directly correlate to more wins, right? That also goes along with more trades does not equal more profit. This starts with this as well. Risk management's always number one. Also with this class, we're talking about having a written trading plan. Do you have a trading plan that this goes off of? If it's not written down, it's drawn out, do not take that trade. You have to have a trading plan. With that as well, did you also weigh opportunity cost? Is this trade for Apple, Amazon, Google, uh, biotech, who cares? Did you weigh it against other picks? Did you take the time to research and say, hey, I think healthcare is kind of getting beaten down. It's a really good value, but energy, is a great momentum purchase. What's the best choice for my account size? What's the best choice for risk? What am I willing to take on right now in these macro markets and in these micro markets? Did you weigh that? If not, we'll talk about that in this class as well. And of course, everything comes off of this. Everything comes off of this. Your ceiling of consistency, your three different types of analysis, your goal setting, trading plan, macro markets, all starts with this. This is the foundation of your structure. This is where we're gonna start our class off at. After that, we discussed the three analysis. The first one we discussed in depth is technical analysis. This is going to be the charting and the drawing and the actual showing value on Thinkorswim for my own personal computer. You can use whatever you want to use for charting. I use Thinkorswim. We're going to talk about supports and resistances. Old supports become new resistances. Old resistances become new supports. We'll discuss that. Trend lines, channels, volume profile the patterns that I like to use, specializing. Do you think it's smart? This may be me just talking into the ether and screaming at the clouds like an old man. Do you think it's smart to do every single pattern and every single trade or just a few? Think about athletes. We'll talk about this in the class. Does, does a pitcher also play outfield? Does a quarterback practice kicking? Does a goalie practice baseball hitting? No, they specialize. Do you specialize in two or three things with technical analysis and really, really hammering it down? We'll discuss that. Do you properly use the history of a stock? Can you properly recognize and use convergence of many factors to your advantage? Can you properly plan reversals? Once you can do that, we're gonna take this brick. Boom, technical analysis. Now your trading structure looks like this. Your trading plan right there. Boom, more safe than it was before. After technical analysis, we're gonna discuss actually writing a trading plan. I went with that first because fundamental and mental analysis can wait till after that. I wanted you to be able to execute why you took this course. When it comes to making a trading plan, do you use and properly utilize the indicators that you like? Do you have a loading zone, a stop loss, a price target drawn and written out? Is it actually written? Is there convergence and buying in? Do you have an entry strategy and an exit strategy? Do you understand buying off of value? Do you understand buying momentum? Do you understand scaling in? Do you also realize you can sell with selling at value 
selling when across a beneath an email line or selling by scaling out. Those are plans you can utilize. What happens if you buy a loser? What happens if you buy a winner? Once you have all that down, once you've taken this course, you can then take your second wall here. We have our TA still getting built with their other ones. Have that added, bada boom, bada bing, looking pretty nice for a swing, ain't it? After that, we'll discuss fundamental analysis. With fundamental analysis, do you actually know how to find value? Do you understand intrinsic value? Do you understand what's overbought and oversold based on the actual data, the numbers, the sheets, the account balances? Do you understand cash flow? Do you understand assets, liabilities, income, and expenses of company? You're going to, you take this course. Do you properly understand how to use an analyst to your advantage in their price targets and how they actually operate? Do you understand catalysts? We have eight we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about stock numbers. Do you know what PE ratio is? Do you understand what a earnings per share is? Do you know what gross margin, return on investment? We'll discuss that as well in this course. Do you understand the gravitational large macro movements? Do you know that every month's not created equally? Did you not know that there's a business cycle that follows sector rotation? We'll discuss that as well. Once you have that done with fundamental analysis, we're gonna take these. Boom, your structure is now almost halfway done. There's a trading system. You choose what this is, you choose. But for now, it's looking okay. It's looking pretty safe, right? After that, we'll discuss mental analysis. There's a lot of great things with mental analysis we're gonna discuss in this course. Do you understand fear? Do you understand confidence? Do you understand not hesitating? Do you understand your edge? Do you think of fear like a dog? If you get fit once, now you're afraid of every single dog, even though not every dog wants to hurt you. Do you understand you never take from the market? You're only given opportunities that you act on. What's risk? What's your definition of risk? Do you have one? Does it make sense to you? For me, risk is what I pay to see if my edge was right. That's why I think about it. I also have a 100% win rate. Not because I actually win every trade, because to me, a winning trade isn't always being green. A winning trade to me is planning a trade and trading that plan. That's mental analysis. We'll discuss all that as well. Once we get done with that, you can then take your last bit of the trading plan, put that right here. Look at this. Boom. More than halfway done. Absolutely gorgeous. Your trading system in there is looking nice and safe. Not perfect, right? We have some more things to cover. But once we're done with mental analysis, we have macro markets. Do you understand? how those work. Do you understand how the S&P works against the NASDAQ, against the Russell 2000, against the Dow Jones 30 industrial complex? Do you know how to chart these? Do you understand how sectors work? What's XLK? What's XLE? What's XLF? What's sector rotation? What's an RRG graph? We'll cover all this in this course. Once you get done with that section, you can take all your macro market planning, put that bad boy right there. We're almost done with our structure safety for your trading plan. Lastly, we're gonna be discussing goal setting. What are SMART goals? Not like, oh, well, SMART goals are ones that are intelligent. No, SMART goals, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time-bound. We're gonna discuss all those types of goal setting within the market. Does it make sense to me if you're gonna to wanna to make 10% in a month and then buy a stock that moves 3% a month? What logic is that? What are your actual long-term goals as an investor? Do you, want to in, do you want to invest and make passive income? Do you want to swing trade so that you can afford a passive income portfolio driven by dividends? Do you want to have so many great growth stocks that when you're 60, they're probably gonna be worth a kabillion dollars? What are your long-term and short-term goals? We'll discuss that as well. Once we're done with that section, which will be around less than, I don't know, 43, I think, take your last piece of the structure, slip that bad boy in right about there, and there we go. Gorgeous. Your structure is almost complete. What's missing though? Should have caught that and keep that in because it's kind of funny. Is the roof of consistency. We don't have a roof on here. How do we manage to have consistency? We'll cover that mental analysis, but also what's your morning ritual every day? How do you mentally handle and plan red days? What do you do on red days? Are you even doing anything red days? Do you scan? That's what I do. Do you read books? Do you research? Do you do, all, do you do anything productive on red days? That's part of consistency. What do you do halfway to your goal of a price start to be consistent and to stay consistent? How do you work over and under the PDT rule? Because if you get more money, that's gonna change as PDT rule changes. You're gonna have new ideas, new abilities, new thresholds. How do you stay consistent? How do you stop torturing yourself by just watching your stocks all day, right? How do you even make a relationship with a stock? Is there a stock you love that you already know what it's gonna do before it does it because you played it nine, 10, 11 times, right? 
How do you possibly do that? And lastly, for consistency, how on earth do you keep and maintain such rigid rules? On the greenest of days, and you take profit early, how can you live with yourself when a stock ran 4,000% you took and you only made it 100% on? Which has happened to me. That's no joke. I've had stocks I've made $2 or $2.20. I was happy and it ran about, it's about 20 bucks in a few days. It's devastating. How do you stay within your rules and being rigid and being okay with losing on some runners? But then again, you'll be very thankful in those red days for sure. How do you stay consistent in your rules? Once we discuss that, you're going to take your little system that you choose. Put it in there. Put a little big roof on there. It might take me a second. Let's see here. Put a little big roof on that bad boy. Bop, 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 bop. Big dumb. Bum, 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 bum. And there you guys have it. That's the structure right here for you. Listen. It's safe. I could throw this against the wall. I'd probably be okay. Just kidding. But that is what we're going to be discussing in this course and why structure is so mightily important. It all comes down to this. Do you properly act upon your edge? Do you think in probabilities? Do you stick to your rules? Do you have a system that works? Do you have a structure that works? That's why this class is going to be so different for you. We're not going to discuss the same old, oh, this guy likes to do option calls on our side under 30 plays. Great. That's a system. We're going to be building a structure. You're going to go through this whole course building such a gorgeous way of protecting your system that's in there right now. It's safe and ready to go. Before we move on to technical analysis, which is about lesson nine, we have a few more to cover. I want to deeply, I want to deep dive into risk management one more time. There's no lesson dedicated to our floor or our foundation. I want to take some moments to discuss that. Again, we cover this in depth in every lesson, but let's really beat into our heads the importance of safety and not blowing up our account and risk management. I also then want to discuss the three analysis in depth. Do you truly understand what technical, fundamental, mental analysis are? That's going to be the most active parts that's actually tangible. You can't write down or be tangible on goal setting, right? So you can't really control macro markets, but you can really judge them with technical, fundamental, and mental analysis. Let's cover those quickly in depth together. Let's talk about scanning. I can very easily sell my scanning stuff for quite a lot of money. I'll give it to you guys for free. I find it really important that it took me months absolute months to find some even good scans it takes forever we'll discuss the importance of scanning and some rookie mistakes with scanning after that let's discuss realistic goals and then let's hop into technical analysis so with that being said with no further ado lesson four the importance of risk management let's get into it